I'm JD. Welcome to my channel. Watch my service. I do watch repair, specifically uh, focusing on pocket watches, vintage pocket watches, North American primarily. I do some European pocket watches, but not a lot. I really enjoy doing the North American pocket watches, the Elgins, the Hamiltons, the Walthams, etc., etc. If you're a Canadian and you want to contact me to do some work for you, just contact me at jdwatchservice at gmail.com. If you're American, you want to do some, you want me to do some work for you. It's a little bit tougher because of borders and stuff, but you can contact me as well and we can talk. I'm a bit busy right now, so uh, we'll probably be able to go full throttle there in, um, I'd say, a couple months, but uh, maybe a little longer. Uh, but for now, uh, just contact me and we'll talk. So shout out to Jesse. I know you're watching. A little pause there. So today we're going to work on this uh, very nice old vintage uh, Waltham pocket watch from a gentleman named wally i had to look down to make sure i had the name right and wally is part of the uh, watch and clock uh, society uh, group member group um, and i met him there and he gave me two pocket watches to have a look at so today we're going to be stripping this down i might be able to put the strip down cleaning and reassembly in one video i'm not sure what the problem with this watch is he said there's some problems with the uh, winding mechanisms i believe so we'll have a look at this watch and uh, go from there so um Please uh, like my videos and please subscribe. Um, I enjoy doing the watch work. I enjoy doing the videos for the watch work to help others that are new in the uh, in the uh, watch repair uh, hobby, I'll call it. So I'm not a professional watchmaker. I just play one on TV. So let's continue with this Waltham. All right, we're just going to take the back off of this watch and have a look at it. I know I've got my uh, camera on the top, but we'll have a look at it this way here. I just absolutely need to cut this thumbnail, but it's great for popping up uh, pocket watch uh, pocket watch lids, I'll say. So this is a very nice sold pocket watch. Um, it looks like the balance is free, which is also very good. It's a Waltham 17 Jewel. So this is a very old pocket watch. Um, it doesn't look like this is catching at all. So there may be a problem here with uh, the winding or the stem in there. Not sure. Uh, we'll have to take this apart and have a look at it um, very soon. So anyway, this is what uh, he was telling me anyway, that there's an issue with this. I don't know if it'll even set, right? If I pull this out and it sets, not sure. Going to have to strip this down and have a look at it because uh, it absolutely looks like it's not connecting properly here. So we'll examine that and start the uh, strip down. So the first thing I'm going to do here is put the uh, case back on loosely. There we go. <clears throat> it looks a, bit, a little bit worn there because it's a very old pocket watch, but this means something to uh, to Wally. This is not a, f a case with a hinge on it, so this is just going to unscrew from the top here. And I I'd love to be able to... Um, uh, it's not a lever set, although they've got a, a little spot here for the lever if it was a lever set. So it's not a lever set. Um, it doesn't seem to want to pop out to actually wind the thing. So we'll see what's going on there. Uh, and I want to remove the hands first, but I can't actually get access to the hands to remove it. So if I try to pop this out here, it's not moving. So there's a problem there, and I'm going to see if I can fix that. But the first thing I'm going to do is remove the hands. So to remove the hands, you should put a a uh, piece of, this is a Bergeron uh, 6938 Swiss made, and this is actually for protecting the uh, the watch face, but I want to remove this this hand first, right, which is like teeny weeny, so, and I got to be very careful when I remove this hand, because it's uh, straight up, and I don't know if I can even get this underneath, so I don't think I can, so I need to get different uh, watch hand removers for this. So being a good watchmaker, I want to put on my proper watch uh, making glasses with the Airy, Airy loop, A-R-Y loop that I have. So this gets you close up so you don't screw things up when you're doing this. So I want to, I want to put a little piece of paper down here for this particular movement, or this, uh, this uh, second hand, so I don't screw that up. So, so what I recommend is you take a very small piece of this kind of paper and a pair of scissors and you want to cut you want to basically cut a slice like that on the paper so i'm just going to cut this this is a this is a mr dress up move for any of you canadians out there that remember that tv show this is a guy that used to um 
Show, show you how to make boats out of milk cartons. You know, a skill that we should all have, right? So I'm just cutting this right now. I'm get, getting rid of that piece of paper. And now I've got this little piece of paper here. I've got to grab my tweezers because I'm fumbling like crazy. So, And what I want to do is just put that on the edge here. That way, when I put my hand removers on the side, um, I'm not fouling the dial so so I just grab my hand removers I got smaller ones here that I've, I've got all kinds of tools man all kinds of tools so and I want to get underneath here carefully because you, you can very easily um, mar this kind of stuff so there we go popped up nicely grab that and get it out of the way and I like to put uh, all the parts on my mat um, I'll just put this out of the way too. I can use that later. And I have a little tiny jar on the side where I put all my leftover junk. So when I have little pieces of paper or batteries or whatever I'm working on, I'll put that in the jar on the side and get that out of the way. So now I've got that. Um, now I should be able to slip this in here. Uh, but I also want to get the hand remover underneath this as well. So. And I'm not sure which hand removers to use here. So if I use these ones here, they're quite wide, which puts, which puts a lot less stress on the face when you pop them up. So if I do that and just juggle it up a bit, um, it gets rid of those hands. So there we go. That's one hand. They look like they're in fairly good condition. And they don't seem to be bent at an angle, which you can get with these watch hands. I know the last watch I repaired had a the hour hand was bent. I was concerned about that. Um, so I I basically left it bent because I was worried about it bending it back and then it snapping. I've got sources of hour hands though, so but while I've got this face nicely sitting in this in this case, I can give the top a bit of a cleaning here with Rodico. So Rodico is watchmaker's best friend. It's not duct tape, it's Rodico. So and if you notice, there's a little brown around the edge of where the sunken dial is here, the second hand sunken dial. And I'm just going to rub this to see if I can get rid of some of that brown. Uh, I might be able to uh, because of the consistency of Rodico. It's kind of gummy and it will grab dirt and move it um, so I can get rid of some of that. I've tried other thing, ways of cleaning watch faces that have been very unsuccessful. One time I took one of my father-in-law's denture cleaner pills and I threw the watch face in the uh, in a jar then I threw the denture, denture cleaner pill in there I can't remember the brand name but I threw that in there and the next morning I woke up and all the all the numbers were off of the dial I'm like good move now luckily that's back when I was starting watchmaking many many years ago and I was fixing watches that I owned so I wasn't as concerned at that point in time because I knew I was screwing up my own watch which is just okay thank you very much um, but after repairing I'd say a couple hundred watches like probably 500 watches now um, I figured out I've learned certain things learned to do things and not to do things right so and one of them is not to use your father-in-law's denture cleaners on the dial. So it's better to leave it looking vintage. So there's a little brown line there. It's a little bit better looking, as you can see, but I don't want to scrape it too much. You know, don't overdo it, but the Rodico works well. It doesn't harm it. Plus when you're scraping it with Rodico, the Rodico bends, it actually bends. Um, and it, it will, in fact, uh, It'll cause, it'll basically, the Rodico won't harm the dial. So this is a, I think this is a glass, yeah, this is a crystal, glass crystal, pretty scratched up. Um, if this were mine, I would probably clean it up and tr try to get rid of the scratches and stuff, but that's a whole other process. But this is a vintage watch, so the owner of the watch likely wants to leave it looking fairly vintage. So you don't want to play with that too much. I hear that that you know vintage watches are worth more this is probably his great grandfather's watch and that's that's Wally and I don't want to mess with that so so that's good so here we go 
I got my mat here, which is really nice. People have asked me where I get these mats and dollar store, man, the dollar store. So I'm going to unscrew the back now and I know I'm a bit closer up, close up. I trimmed my thumbnail by the way, cause I was disgusted with it too. So even though now it's going to be hard to get underneath there, it's trimmed, but the fingernails for guitar, they're not getting trimmed. Sorry about that. So now I want to uh, just unscrew these screws cause I want to remove the, uh, I want to remove the movement from this watch. So I should be able to just place this down here and get a couple of uh, screws here. Let me just open my, my screwdriver compartment, grab this over here and then make sure you've got the right size screws for the movement. So you want to, uh, yeah. So I just saw this, this wheel move down a bit. So that might be the problem about the, uh, it not grabbing the crown wheel uh, properly. So I always need to get my books out so I remember what things are called. Because you don't when you're when you're repairing or cleaning a watch, um, typically you don't call you don't name parts as you're doing your work, right? So this is in a little bit tight. So when you're using screwdrivers, you got to be very snug with the screw, right? So snug. But if you've got an issue, you don't want to overdo it. So be very cautious as well. Uh, and this movement, because I can't pull the crown out here, it might be a little trickier to get out. Uh, no, it's coming out. It's coming out. So there we go. So that came out. That looks pretty friggin' dirty in there. That's going to have to be cleaned up nicely. And I probably can run this through an ultrasonic cleaner and then re-oil it. And then this, is, this watch is dirtying up my mat. What the heck, eh? So maybe if I blow on this stuff, just keep your hands away. Yeah, this is one dirty watch. You see, I just put this down here. So this movement has probably never been cleaned. It's got a, uh, it has, this here is a dust cover and that just helps prevent dirt from getting in there. But look at that crap in there. That's gotta be causing problems, right? So you want to take the dust cover off. Um, I can use the Rodico to clean up some of this crap and then I get a new piece of Rodico after and like a cleaner piece. So because the crap will stick to the Rodico, which is nicely nice, nice. And then you stretch it out and fold it over uh, to get rid of uh, more crap. So but I'll do this. This watch has likely never been cleaned. It's in pretty uh, poopy condition here. So. And I want to get a screwdriver. I'll pick a smaller one here. I want to get it underneath here and just see if I can wedge out the uh, this dust cover. This dust cover is in there good. I ain't wedging at all. So I'm going to take it from the back. Let's move it back here. I know you're going to get mad at me for wearing gloves, but this thing is going to go into the cleaning machine. So we're going to clean it up nicely in the cleaning machine. All right, there's a little place right in there to get this thing up a bit. There we go. So if you see that, there's a little indentation and there's a little punch punch mark there to keep it in place. And when you're putting it back, it's pretty easy because it's going to line up with the where the crown go or the stem goes into the watch. So it's not a big, no big deal there. But it looks like it's got to pass by here. So I'm going to just go in here again and see if I can wedge this up. There we go. So I've got it wedged up a bit. Now I can just move it out of the way. So there it is there. I'm just going to put this on the mat for a second. Over here, I'm going to put it on the crystal because it's pretty dirty. Dirty. Now what I want to do is remove this, this watch face here right away and put it aside. And to do that, there's these little screws in the corner here right here and you just have to get in there nicely and just turn your screwdriver around all this stuff is pretty seized and they're grabbing the dial feet and if I had a problem with the dial feet I'd have to solder on new dial feet I have a dial foot soldering machine um, which I've, I've made a video on how to do that how to solder watch dial feet um, if I have to I do it if I don't have to then great I want to keep my fingers away from the, uh, ah, Jesus, these screws are in tight. I want to keep my fingers away from the balance 
right? But I'll leave the balance in for now, just as I take the watch face off. And so for this, all you have to do is take your screwdriver and you put it in here and just twist it a bit, right? There we go. Let's twist that a bit. And I like to use the skin on my fingers to hold that face in place while I put the screwdriver in and twist it some more, right? And I don't want to break the dial feet, so you got to be very careful here that you can bring it up straight off without impacting the dial feet. So that's, that's not too bad, but I got to get this one over here done. So let's do that and that. They're always fighting each other, right? So see if I can just drop that straight down. There we go. And what I'll do here right away is take off the uh, the the hour wheel and you see how that hour wheel has got a that little piece of brass there I think that's brass so that that keeps it's bent and it keeps the um, dial from it basically keeps the hour wheel pressed down onto the cannon pinion so I'll just move that out of the way right now I'll remove the cannon pinion after but what the first thing I want to do here is get rid of that uh, get that balance out of there so there's no harm and there's no way you can harm the balance. There's the dial and the dial feet as you can see and it's in fairly good condition so just turn that around nice and carefully. It's got a little bit of a speckle of something but I'll blow that off and then put that on top of the movement or the, the uh, case and now I'm going to use my number 58 Myers number 58 movement holder just to hold this in place while I'm removing the um, the balance. So look around to see if anything's stuck out of the place. But first, I want to think I'm, before I do that. Before I do that, there's always a before. I'm going to screw these the face holders back in again so that they're out of the way. Oh, I think my wife's in town. I'm going to have to make sure she knows that I am doing work on watches. Alrighty then, I'm back. I'm going to move my camera out just a bit. All right, so this gives me a little bit more room with the camera here. So here it is here. So this is, I think this is, this looks a bit loose. I'm hoping the screw is okay here, but let's get rid of that. Uh, let's get rid of the balance first. So I put that into the Myers number 58 movement holder, rotate it just a bit so the balance is out of the way. And I'm gonna tighten this. Now this number 58 movement holder, as you can see, there's it's spring loaded here so when you tighten it it's not a physical thread to thread tightening so it's not going to harm the watch that way so but you do have to be careful so I'm going to take the balance off this watch and again I'm cleaning the watch so I'm not too concerned with the fingerprint problem but I think when I uh, holy Christ these this thing is like in good so I want to make sure I'm holding that down as I remove it now I did buy a stick so I gotta find the stick I bought the stick it's a Bergeron stick it's probably the most expensive stick I have so it's not a it's not a uh, it ain't a cheap stick as they say and I'm trying to find the stick and I don't think I can find it I think I lost my stick I got it here somewhere it's amongst amongst the stuff it's here somewhere where did I put that stick well, in the meantime, I'm just going to get a piece of pegwood and hold it down with a piece of pegwood instead of the stick. I also need to get, well, basically I'll rest it. I'll just show you what I'm doing here. So I so just want to remove that screw and keep the uh, balance cock down. And there we go. <laughs> now, I was told, I asked somebody, why do they call that a balance cock, right? So... They said the reason for calling it a balance cock is that there's one screw holding it out. If there was two on either side, it would be a balance bridge. So that's some little tidbit of information for you. So what I want to do now, I get rid of all this dirt. This is dirtying up my mat. This is pissing me off. I may have to get a new mat. So I want to basically um, put that on here and allow the balance to rest on here. So, And I think if I leave it like this let me see will that let's bring it up just a bit like that that might be good enough and I want to bring the balance out of the watch now 
very carefully. Now I've seen, I like to, to do it this way and tip it. And then that way it comes out nice and easy. It doesn't touch anything. And then I put it down here and I have to adjust this because as you can see, it's too far away. So I'm just going to hold the balance in one hand while I spin that in. And I'm just going to eyeball the adjustment here. That's probably good enough there. Turn that around and then drop the balance down and put the balance on the the holder very carefully. Got to find the hole. Okay, there we go. There we go. And then I just want to rest, ride that down a bit, and then let go. Get my fingers out of there, and I want that balance to be just sitting on that pad like that. So now it's pretty much resting. Now I could bring that up just a tad. So I'm going to just do that and then unspin it a bit to bring it up and then lower it again. So there. Now the balance is resting completely so I don't have any issues with stress on the hairspring. Um, later on when I clean the, the balance cock, the hairspring, the jewel on the top, the upper jewel, the jewel cap, uh, I want to make sure all that is in good condition. Um, but I can move this out of the way for now so my hands won't hit it. Just move that out of the way. That's my recommendation when you're working on these pocket watches that just get stuff out of the way or you're going to end up paying for it later. So, And if, if I can dab the mat here, because I got a lot of crap on there and I don't want the mat to get too dirty. My computer is telling me that it's getting hot and I don't understand why. So it's resetting the power settings for the computer and it didn't like it or something. So it says your CPU is at 65% warning. So there we go, dab that mat. And now I've got this here. And <clears throat> so the sequence of events here for doing this is you would remove these plates first. So what I wanna do is remove the main plate here I'll leave this plate intact in, in because I want to, you want to be able to remove the uh, pallet fork and the bridge for the pallet fork. And that's called a bridge because there's two screws on either side. And then there's, you know, you've got the escapement here underneath this wheel here. And that's, and when you count wheels on a pocket watch, you start at the mainspring. So you go one, two, three, four. And the fourth wheel would be the second hand for the watch. And that would ride all the way up and be lined up with the uh, winding, the crown and the winding, or the stem, right? So that's that. So I want to remove these wheels here. And I'm just going to put my finger down here nice and easy because I'm just hoping this, I don't have problems here because these are old and because they're old, they can twist off wrong. So I want to be able to loosen this up and without having an issue. So you get the right size screwdriver because the wrong size screwdriver will cause you problems. Well, I'm going to take this off first just to get it out of the way. All right, just in general, everything in this pocket watch is stiff as heck. So I'm very concerned with that. I'm going to go up one screwdriver here. Yeah, I don't like, I'm worried that if I do this, the head comes off the uh, screw and then I got a whole other problem. So hope Wally can appreciate that. So I'm just there. I managed to get this off. There we go. That was on like a hundred years ago. So I just put that aside and then I can just pop this up. I'm pretty positive that the power is taken off the watch, but if it isn't, that could be a whole other problem. So I think it is so moving this around because I know that what I would normally do is just remove the click, take the click, hold that in place and remove the power. Um, maybe I should try that before I take this off, right? I'm just going to screw that back in for one second, just in case there's power on this thing. I don't think there is because it's uh, not getting through, but I can just take it off lightly like that and then get a, this is, um, I need a bench key here. So move this around like that. And then I put the bench, put it in like this. 
and then fit the bench key in. Is that the right size? Make sure it's the right size. All right, so that's pushing into wind, which is nice. And then I just take my, I'll take my brass tweezers here and just move this out of the way for a second. And then when I back that off, is there any mainspring power left? Nope, none. So now I don't have to worry about the mainspring snapping back, which is a concern here. So, so I'm going to take this off again. And I uh, put that out of the way, get that out of the way. Uh, I should just be able to nudge this up. And you can note that there's a, there's a little, there's a, I'm not sure whether it's stainless steel or not, but there's a, uh, a bit of a washer on top of this. So you got to keep an eye that you're not losing any of these parts. So that's that. And because I have this out of the way, I could probably take this stuff out of the way as I attack this here. So I'm going to see if I can do that. Um, to remove this wheel here, I have to remove the cannon pinion. So I'm just going to flip this around quickly because I've got some stuff on this end that I need to deal with. Um, so removing the cannon pinion, usually not that difficult, but I've got a cannon pinion remover tool. Because if you don't have a cannon pinion remover tool, then you are a loser. So here it is. There's the tool here. It's got the jaws of death here. This reminds me of the Alien movie. Um, now, let me see if I can just remove this minute wheel out of the way. Because I don't want that to get hurt, destroyed, or otherwise. So you put this right over the cannon pinion. And make sure it's on there snug. And then make sure the two jaws on either side are touching the plates. And there's the... I'll drop that. See if I can drop that. Come on, drop. Yeah, it's not dropping. There's the cannon pinion, so I just take that out. And again, put that aside. So now I've got the cannon pinion out of the way. I can leave the rest of it where it is. Um, and while I have this upside down here, I'm just gonna take that bench key again and push in here just to see if the action is working. So and it does look like it's working. So that's good. That's good news. So that should turn and that should turn there. So that's good. Excellent. So that's working. So now I'll flip that watch over again. I'm chatty McChatty pants and tighten it up a bit. Now I'm just going to remove uh, this plate here and I should be, be able to remove the center wheel now because I took the uh, I took that cannon pinion off. So I'm going to remove the plate here and again these screws are probably tight as hell because oh, that wasn't too bad. That one's a little stiffer and just make sure the blade is in there nicely and then I can remove the screws. When you back the screws off you can actually hear them click as you get past the thread. So I'm going to move that out of the way. Um, I'm going to take the screw for the balance and then throw that over here with the balance because I don't want to lose that screw. So I'm not sure if I can throw it in there. Yeah, it fit all the way through. <laughs> This fell all the way through. So I'm just going to rest it on top here. I don't want to get it stuck in there. So what I'm going to do is take a little tiny piece of Rotico like that, rip it off, and then take the screw that I have here, this screw here, and just put it on the Rotico like that. And then just put the Rotico on the uh, balance holder like that. There. That way I'm not going to lose that screw. It's not going to find it uh, find it somewhere else in 10 years time. So, And hopefully Wally is satisfied with my work so far. Who knows? Um, again, you want to hold the plate down while you're removing screws. And that just ensures that, you, uh, that nothing pops up and could cause a pivot on the end of one of the wheels to bend or something like that. So, Got, a, got an email from someone today out there. Shout out to you. Um, and he asked me if I can re-pivot a fourth wheel on a pocket wash, but he, he also said, can you put the cap back on the arbor? And I'm like, I don't know what the heck that is. But if you're talking about the, uh, the lower pivot going through and there's a, basically a cap there, I can probably do that. I need to find that stick. It's really pissing me off that I can't find that stick. All right, stick, where are you? Did I put the stick in the safe or something? 
maybe I did. Maybe I liked that stick so much I saved it. So anyway, forget the stick for now. Let's just keep going here. So I'm just going to take my screwdriver and very carefully put it under the plate like that. And then I should be able to lift this straight up. Hoping no wheels are just stuck in the jewels. But we'll see if it goes straight up. And it does. So there it is there. Now I'll be looking, let's put my hand up here. So these are the jewels. And I'm going to look and see if any of those jewels are cracked. If they're cracked, it's a whole other job, which I may have to do. Um, if they're cracked and I've got to do this job, I'll likely do it over the Christmas holidays because it's quite a job to do it and you want to be able to concentrate. So I'll take this plate now and just put it over where the screws are here. Group them up nicely. And now, oh, can I get the center wheel out? It'd be nice if I could, right? It still won't go by that thing there. So, And then the other wheels are just tucked in there. So, But for the protection of whatever in mankind, um, I just need to remove this one here, and I'm really worried about the screw head coming off. So let me just go back in here again. Um, make sure I got a screwdriver that fits into that slot well. It seems a little bit loose. I'm going to go up even one more here. So that's tighter here. I'm going to get a better grip on it. And when I turn that, I'm just trying to make sure I got a grip. not getting a grip. Let me look at my head here. That, that looks good. So you just look at your screwdrivers here and make sure they're... Yeah, that actually looks pretty good. So is it my screw or what? Jesus Murphy. That screw, I'm worried about that screw. I don't want to strip it. I don't want to take the head off. That would really piss me off. So let me think. I got to think of what to do here. What should I do? I think I can remove the um, the plate here and leave that in for now. And that way I can get a grip on it from the other side. So let me see if I can do that. Okay. Because that is going to be a problem screw. And and problem screws. Like these are tight. I'm telling I'm done a lot of watch work and these screws are tight. That means it's very old and they're seized up. So I'm thinking if I can remove this plate then with the with this on, then there's a chance I can there's a chance I can put some chemicals in there to loosen that up. So let me see what I can do here. Wow, all these screws are super tight. All right, Wally, I know why you gave me this watch. You gave me this watch so I would be worried. That's why. I'm trying to think, can I remove this without that plate coming off? I should be able to. Holy shit. Oh, wow, that is tight. Okay, that is ridiculous. This thing has never been cleaned. <clears throat> All right, now the question is, can this come up? I'm really hoping it can. There we go. All right, so there it is. There's a screw there. So I should be able to put some chemicals in there to loosen that up somehow. Because I maybe if I wash the whole plate, when I wash it, the chemicals from the washing will cause it to loosen. So, so I'm going to move this out of the way now. Let me grab that with my tweezers and just put that over the way where the screws are. And now, ooh, 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 I always take a photograph of this area here because uh, every watch has got its own little personality and I don't have watch repair manuals for these watches. So if you don't have the manual then you better take a friggin picture because you'll forget how it goes back together and that'll ruin your life. So I want to lift that straight up now. It's a wheel there. And lift this straight up. And now I'm exposing the... Uh, I'll examine the pivots on these as well to make sure there's no issue. That's the second the second uh, wheel, which is number four, and that's the pivot. you got to be very careful you don't foul that because you have to put the second hand back on that pivot. 
and should be able to remove the escapement too. There we go. Take that out. And now I want to remove the pallet fork and hopefully the pallet fork screws aren't ridiculously tight. I'm not sure, but we'll see. And again, I'll just loosen them up first. All right, that one moved. And that one moved. Okay, so I think we're good with the pallet fork. Again, you want to take a piece of pegwood or the this Bergeron stick that I can't find, and you want to keep the pallet fork bridge down while you're removing the screws. So that's one screw, and really they're the same screws, so you don't have to worry about one going left, one going right. There are pocket watches I've worked on where the uh, the screws are different sizes, not normally on the pallet fork. Um, I had an interesting problem with a with a watch a while back where I actually had to the pallet fork bridge was scraping on the center wheel for some reason I don't know why I actually had to shave some material off the bridge so it wouldn't touch the center wheel and that actually that actually made everything work nicely um, I don't know I, I looked at what was going on and I couldn't figure out why it would be touching it but it was touching it so I lift that straight up so you don't bend the pivot to the pallet fork and you put this aside and again I'll look at the jewel to make sure it's not cracked but Usually there's no stress on that pallet fork. Um, so what we have here is the pallet fork, right? And we've got the jewels on the end of the pallet fork here on both sides. And these are the banking pins. So make sure you don't play with the banking pins. They're usually set well. You only have to play with it if you've got problems with the uh, with actual banking. Um, and you don't have good, good enough uh, stop and release from the escapement here with the pallet fork. So. And I've got a jewel here, but when I flip that over, I'll be able to remove that jewel later and then clean it. So I'll put this plate through the cleaning machine first before I remove that. So but I'll just lift that pallet fork out of the way and then put that on the side, on the mat, on the side, on the mat. Then take out the mainspring here. That goes straight up. There it is there. So I'll pop the balance and get rid of that mainspring and clean it. And... You could put a new mainspring in every time, or you could not put a new mainspring every time. I'm going to do a close-up video of this thing here, though, because I think this putting this back together is, looks like it's going to be a pain in the Patinsky. See the way that works there? And there's a spring mechanism in there. I'm a little worried about taking that apart. I may not take that apart. I may just pull this up out of the way, like so, and then I'll just take a quick photograph of that. Because I am worried about these are old watches and you can break the spring on some of this stuff, right? So first of all, I'm just going to remove it, get this out of the way, and then and then we'll we'll determine after whether I'm actually going to, you know, do anything about that. So I just take that, put that out of the way. I want to have a put my airy loop and flip it down and have a little close look at all this stuff. Tons of stuff. There's stuff in here. I look the way this thing is put together. And this looks like it's soldered onto that. The screw here looks like it holds a spring down here. And I'm really concerned about that part too. Do I leave that where it is? Um, or, and clean it like that and then oil it after? Or what? Not sure. Yeah, we're going to have to figure that one out after. So, yeah. I might not take that apart. So, I am looking at the jewels just a bit to see if there's a problem. And they look sort of okay. One of them looks like it might have a problem. There's also a spring here, too, that you would pull back to release this. So, But I think I'll clean all that in situ. Sorry about that, buddy. Uh, Wally, I just worried about... These springs here are almost impossible to get. I've Actually, I don't know if I've ever seen one of these. And if you take that out and something happens, then you can't replace that spring. Then you've got a watch that's non-serviceable. You'd have to find another another movement to figure out whether I've got a sacrifice movement or not. Um, and that is not something I want to do. I've take the, taken these apart before. Not a problem. It's that spring underneath that I'm worried about. So, And it shouldn't make a difference seems like it's got good movement on it. I'm looking at the jewels right now and I'm looking at that jewel right there and that looks like it might have an issue. Um, 
and that jewel that right there as well but I look at under my stereo microscope to make sure we've got it's not a problem so I just zoom back a bit here and you can see my collection of parts here um, there we go that's a, a good view of it so this stuff needs to go into the cleaning bins there are the bins and I will just bin them while I'm I'll just put those in the bins while you guys are watching uh, so you've got a number of bins here you got bin one bin two I've been doing this for a while <laughs> so there you go so take that bin out and I've got the bin here with some smaller bins for smaller parts but I can take this I'm examining the jewels after I clean it because it's going to likely expose um, if that was dirt or a crack but I will go under my stereo microscope and have a look at that so so that's that there um, I want to put some of the plates in there uh, that I have and take a photograph of my mat and so when I finish the cleaning I can bring the stuff back but but this plate here this is the plate that was causing me the problems this one right here with that screw in the bottom so and it looks as though I'm just looking at the movement of this thing here yeah there's some there's some movement here which you don't want and so I'm just gonna clean this and see if it loosens that up nicely I can throw that in there on the bottom plate no problem and there are three screws with that but I'm not gonna throw those in there um, you can clean your screws but if they're different size then you're then things are gonna happen so let me look at the size of these screws to see if that's going to be a problem. Yeah, sometimes they're a different length, right? Is it really needed? That's the question. That is the question, my friends. And I know that this can't fit in here, so this has got to go in here as well. Um, and then I want to, what I want to do here is, I want to get my containers these little containers here and this is where I'll put some of the smaller parts so I don't have many parts this is uh, to deal with uh, as this is not a, uh, a chronograph like the one I'm working on and just for uh, if um, if my uh, friend is watching um, I, I have ordered the chronograph parts I'm gonna put the cannon pinion in here I'm gonna put the minute wheel in here like that I'm going to put the the uh, the hour wheel in here. I'm going to leave that the gasket or the whatever it's called on there. <laughs> I was trying to remember what it's called. Uh, that's good enough for this little basket. So I'll just throw that down and click that basket down like that. And then this basket here is going to have in it. I talk a lot my computer is telling me it's hot again I think I could reboot it because I've slowed down the processing speed so it doesn't get hot so I'm just gonna throw this whole thing and this whole mess in here I'm looking at how it comes apart and stuff and and again just to lessen the confusion you take a quick picture of that and you're gonna save yourself hours of how do I put that back together there we go so I'll just throw that in here like that I can dump that out so it's by itself clean that up and this wheel here I believe this is called the crown wheel so this is the wheel that is connecting with that this wheel here that's causing the problems from the bottom right so I just have to make sure that the interface is good and I can throw this in here but I'm not going to I'm going to find a different container for that that's what I'm gonna do that is what I'm gonna do uh, what else do I want to put in there let me think I can probably that's good enough for now let's put that in there like that there we go and now I've got this container here and I think I want to put the uh, the bridge for the balance or the bridge for the pallet fork in here that's the pallet fork bridge and because I'm only putting that in there I can throw the two screws in there nicely um, and what else do I want to put in there you don't want things to bang around so you want to be very careful with it I can put this in here too as well there we go and 
Also, when you're putting in your cleaning machine, although these things don't weigh a lot, you want to make sure it's balanced out nicely. So I've got one more container, and what I want to put in this container is the escapement. So it's all by itself. And again, don't want to have to worry about the escapement getting knocked around. There it is. So it can go in there. And I think that's all I'm going to put in there. And I will clean the pallet fork by hand. So the escapement's in there. That's good. That's two containers. So I put them back. I'll just put the two in there now. So I lower this one. Actually, the other thing I'm going to do is I need to pop out the mainspring. So let's do that right now. That's the mainspring. Uh, let me see how that works. Da -da -ba -doo, da -ba -doo -doo. It's got a hook on it. It's a doubled over mainspring. That'll be a pain in the butt when I put it back together. Uh, let me see. How am I going to get that off? Let me see. I know it, if you curl it backwards, it'll come off, right? So I will just do that. And then it comes off the arbor. If you twist it the right way, it's going to come off the arbor. If you don't, it won't. These mainsprings are a pain in the butt, I'm telling you. There we go. So that's the mainspring in there. Like that. There's the arbor. I'm actually going to take a picture of that too, just in case I forget. And they're a little trickier to put back, but you got to do it. So there you go. Take a picture of that. Take a picture of the mainspring. I do that so I know which way to wind it in. And now when I pull out the mainspring from this watch, I can get my... Th See, if I had the long thumbnail still, which I cut off, you idiot, I'd be able to put that the thumbnail under here and then ride it around as I, as I remove the mainspring. So you want to walk that around and hold the mainspring on the edge as you walk it around. So do that. Um, I'm going to use my tweezers again to get that thing around. Fingers in, tweezers out, start walking. Walk in the mainspring, walk in the mainspring. And now I should be able to put that mainspring in the uh, center basket. There we go. There's the mainspring. It's got a funky hook here. It looks like that hook is no longer hooked. What the heck is that? So now I've got, see that thing? I think this was on the end, I believe. And the hook has a, yeah, it's got a little tab on it. So what I'm going to end up doing, I think, is ordering a new mainspring. Because this is set, right? I know what type mainspring it is. I can redo that hook on the end without a problem. I'll clean it, but I'll order a new mainspring. So I'm going to put that over here and... I'll have to measure the mainspring. You got to measure its its strength, which is its width around here, and then you measure how uh, how wide it is, and then you uh, you make an assumption or measure how long it is, which is usually 400 to 550 long. Um, so yeah, I don't even know whether I'm going to bother throwing that in because I'm going to end up ordering a new mainspring because that is set, which means it's not going to provide much power to the watch and and there's no way of unsetting a mainspring so so i can throw that in here and this will allow me to clean the barrel there we go barrel is out and then i put these on top of here and i'll get the this here and then i'll do the wheels at the very end so i put that in there and drop that down like so and my stupid computer is saying it's it's uh, warning me again that it's overheated so i'm going to click that off There, I just stopped recording and started again. That way my file doesn't get corrupt. So this here, then, I'm going to put in these wheels in here. So very carefully picking up this wheel here, which is the, the fourth wheel. And then the third wheel, which is an intermediate wheel, I'm going to also put that in the other basket right here. And then the center wheel, I'll put on the edge here, even though it's heavier. Uh, I'll just put it right there. And that should be good. I can throw these screws in here because they're big. Those are the case screws. They feel magnetic, like you drop them down and they look like they went ding to the side. But they shouldn't be magnetic, but they feel magnetic. What is the deal with that? And I'm going to put these screws in here. One, two, three. 
These are for the different plates. And then throw these screws in here. One, two, three. They won't fall through anything, so that's good. One, two, three. And then I've got one more screw left. But this screw is for that, this screw here, and that's for the uh, the main, the wheel that's over the main the uh, mainspring. But I'm not gonna, and I want to clean this by hand, and now and I want to basically clean that this pellet fork by hand, and I'll use lighter fluid because it won't affect the shellac, right? So shellac, jack shack shellac. So so thanks for anybody that's been watching the video this long thanks a lot because even now even i would be bored at this time and want to turn this thing off so there we go i'll put the lid back on there so the the case itself i will put into the ultrasonic cleaner and then be able to clean it that way so it's uh, nice and spanky clean so there it is there's the uh, there's the watch completely disassembled and again i've got a measure the mainspring. I could do that right now actually and just show you how that's done. Just hang on a second. Alright, I, I bought the world's biggest base right for holding stuff. So I gotta adjust my camera a little bit so you may see my chest here at the bench. So that's the world's biggest base for holding stuff and this thing rotates like that. But this is great for angling um, a micrometer. So I've got a micrometer here let me just take that out for a second. So you're getting the full Monty today on this video. So there you go. There's the micrometer and the battery for it. There's the top part, right? The and I throw the battery in there because basically I only use the micrometer for measuring mainsprings. So if I look at the micrometer and what I want to do here, what I'm going to do here is take the micrometer and then pinch it into the stand here. So it's so I can actually use it and use it or lose it. So I want to put it in the stand. This stand is really heavy, so I got to watch it where I put that down and it might end up screwing things up. So I throw the battery in here and the micrometer should actually turn on, but I'm going to do that and screw in this back screw here to get this thing in working order here. So just take this cap and put it in somehow. Come on, find your way home. Find your way home. Uh, that looks not too bad. As long as it's in a bit. So, good enough. And there's the micrometer, and I'll just squeeze this in, right? It looks like there's a long way to squeeze it, so. Oh, there it is. Now this is, this, this stand here now is squeezing the micrometer in there, and I can bend that down a bit if I want. But as you tighten it, it tightens its, its position, so. I just need it like that. And then if I'm measuring the mainspring, I wonder if I can move my camera to do this. All right, that's about as good as I can move my camera. And I gotta go in an angle here to do this so I could screw it up. So, so there's a micrometer and I wanna loosen that micrometer up, right? So right now it's, it's tight. So if I undo it there, I should be able to loosen it. So what I wanna do is set it to zero so I can zero that micrometer it's also set to millimeters as you can see so if I put the spring in right just take your mainspring your old mainspring and flatten it out a bit so I have a flat area here to put in the micrometer and I just loosen the micrometer and I hold the end part I'll show you that in a second but I put the spring in like that and then I tighten that tighten it up until it clicks there we go and what is that reading that's 0.8 0.183 millimeters right so that's that's that reading and now I want to want to do as you can see back here I'm using this here so that's 0.183 millimeters take it out pick another little area here and squeeze it back in again I'll zero it out see if I can zero that out yeah, it's already zeroed and do this again and then tighten that up and see what I get I get 0.182 millimeters. So that's 0.182 millimeters. Just take that, write that down on a piece of paper. 0.182 millimeters. And that's the strength. Strength. I'll just put ST down there. So there we go. ST, 0.182 millimeters ST. So now the height. 
So that can be, you can measure the barrel as well, and it'll give you a barrel height, but I like to measure the spring itself and just squeeze that in there like that and get a general height there. Make sure it's flattened. General height, I served under him. So make sure it's not at too much of an angle. So it's 2.77. So take that out again and then put it back in and remeasure. 2.77. No, nope, that's at too much of an angle. No, nope, that's too much of an angle. That looks pretty good there. 2.77 again. So I'm thinking 2.77. 2.77 wide right so that's the width of it and now the length I'm not too worried about the length because what I'll do is I can measure the barrel right to make sure the barrel is right so but the length you can stretch it out and try to measure the length but usually if you get the barrel size it should fit into one third of the barrel I think is the math on it so if I were to get the barrel out I'm doing this just for you, okay? I'm getting that darn CPU warning again. Like, stop it. Stop it! So, let me get the barrel out so I can be as anal retentive as possible here. So, there's the barrel, and I want to measure the outer barrel. So, you can measure the inner, but it doesn't matter. It's just close enough. And you want to take the barrel and then flip this way over to measure the barrel diameter. So, let me get that like this. This is one big barrel, ladies and germs. I'm thinking 13 or 14, maybe. So there's the barrel, and I'll just measure it like that. And you just have to be close enough. Ooh, 18. So 18.34 for the barrel. Take it out. Turn it around. Measure it again. 18.34. What do I got? 18.34 twice. So that's as long as I get an 18, I'm probably good because the there's width of the barrel here that you have to kind of subtract and it's probably 0.2 millimeters so i said 18 point what let me try it one more time here 18.339 so good enough and write that down on a piece of paper 18 point 18 point three three nine and that's the barrel diameter R E L D I A. Man, I cannot print well when I'm sitting down low. So that's the mainspring. That's the specs for the mainspring. And I just make, have to make sure now that when I order that mainspring, that this is a bridle that basically hooks onto the edge of the barrel. So when I look at the barrel, I've got a little, a little punched out hook on this barrel right there. There's a hook on the barrel. And I got to make sure the, sp the spring I order can actually go down and hook into that barrel. So it shouldn't be too hard. I've done that before. So where I'll order that from, and this is a plug for my friends at Cousins UK. I'll order that from Cousins UK. And they usually, I usually go into the, the spring selection section and I'm able to find a spring. Now I do have main springs, tons of different main springs, but likely I don't have this one. So I'll probably go online and look for the right mainspring. So then you put this all away and you're good to go. Now, like every good watchmaker, you got to put your tools away. So this one here, I just have to have to get the battery out like that. And I keep this out of it so I can just put everything in back in the case. And for the next time, I have to measure a mainspring. So I just toss the battery in right on the edge there. And like that put in wind this down and then put you know so it's not the world's biggest micrometer it won't fit in the case unless i wind it down tight right so and you wind that thing down winding winding this is so exciting you can't wait you know you can fast forward youtube videos you know that right so it's basically no battery in it throw that in like that throw in the piece of paper Throw this cap thing in there like this. Close this thing down. Snap it up. Cats and dogs living together. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Somebody taught me the other day how to impersonate. Who was it? It was Owen Wilson. So I was impersonating Owen Wilson and they said, all you have to say is, 
oh yeah like that and that's or I think it was oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah my name is Owen Wilson I'm a famous actor there's my Owen Wilson impersonation so take this basket I don't want to screw this up I did a good job on this so gotta go down to the cleaning machine the cleaning machine was in the basement and do the cleaning so I have a, a pearl watchmaking cleaning machine so I make sure the baskets are snugged in there so parts don't take a ride and that's that all right that's the strip down of the pocket watch that uh, you just saw and there's the dimensions for the uh, the mainspring I'll order that right now from Cousins UK um, and everything is nicely in the basket uh, this is my airy loop that I showed you earlier so that's the airy loop it's so good you can tighten this here and it grabs both sides and make sure you get the right size okay if you're gonna buy one of these this is a standard the standard size here standard airy loop a r y get the maxi okay so I got a standard um, and I have a maxi right so the maxi is much better it fits on a bigger eyeglass here and then when I got these eyeglasses a few years back I made sure they're they're I've got a, effectively a split lens a two lens here so the bottom part is gives me allows me to work on pocket watches at the right distance and the top part is actually for viewing my computer screen so I can actually look at the computer screen or I can look down at the watch and then when I put this airy loop down and I think this is a times three and I put this over the top of that lower part of the lens I get probably times six or something on that so it's pretty close maybe maybe even closer than times six so it works super well and I love this I love the loop and I love these glasses I think the glasses cost around 700 bucks okay that's a lot of money a lot of skins so now I've got to take this um, I've got the uh, I basically have to take the uh, this here face here and leave that alone I did it's it's in pretty good condition but keep that out of the way so nothing gets broken um, and then this can go into the uh, the uh, ultrasonic cleaner this can go in the ultrasonic cleaner and if this gets unglued I can glue that back in again no problem um, and this can go into the ultrasonic cleaner as well and as it says this is gold filled gold filled it looks like it's had it's a fortune watch case let me see if I can do a close-up on this give me a close-up give me a close-up so it's a fortune there we go fortune watch case gold filled um, American Waltham is AWC it was American Waltham uh, what is it American watch company I think anyway American Waltham watch company I figured it out a few days ago but you see all these little marks on the edge here and stuff like that those are previous watchmakers who have attacked this so it's had a couple of uh, servicings but they were a long time ago like I said I've got that one plate that's got issues right and I will take this and put this in the ultrasonic cleaner now the problem with this is that it was not not able the crown here when I pull out the crown and the stem it was not able to to click out and that means I have got to adjust inside there's a little metal thing that grips on the edge of that and so I've got to get this thing out from the inside and then adjust it so it actually works properly right because it won't be able to you won't be able to wind the watch or anything so right now it's just stuck as crap eh? and there's two little claws basically that snap in and out so you gotta fix fix it damn it so you can put a little bit of oil in the threads but it's not necessary but I want to get rid of all the gum and stuff like that on this watch so that'll be ultrasonically clean and then later on when I get back uh, from the cleaning I'm gonna end up examining all the jewel settings um, and then making sure there's no cracks or anything you can have a jewel setting it's like a donut with a hole and that donut with a hole can you can have a little crack a side crack on that jewel setting and it'll eventually wear away that pivot because like having a, a graver uh, continuously touching the pivot on the wheel right so if there's a crack on the side it may work well you may think well that's not a problem it's just a crack right but in fact it turns it into a graver and works away at that pivot which is eventually break your pivot on the watch right um, so that's not a good thing so you have to replace a jewel that's got a crack on it um, I, I use seats jewels s-e-i-t-z jewels and I've got plenty of seats jewels that usually fit if I can't find a jewel 
Um, I go to my friend at Dave's Watch Parts and tell him exactly what I'm looking for, and he'll send me the jewel. But it's cheaper for me if I use jewels that I have already have. So if I have to actually take the jewel setting and, and do some work on the jewel setting, I do that too. I unscrew the jewel setting, pop it out, and then work on the... Uh, work on the actual jewel. Someone asked me who's watched my video, can you actually push a jewel out and push it back in with the jewel setting still in the plate? The answer is yes, you can do that. Um, pushing the jewel setting out is tricky because uh, you can you can tear the burnishing material because the jewel basically is grabbed with this with the, the metal that's from the setting um, and you, it, I've got videos on how to make jewel settings but if you push that out and it does this, it's expanding it and it's going to crack the edge of that burnished material. Now, if it just cracks it in one place, it's not too bad. You can burnish in another jewel because likely that, that jewel is sitting in the plate like that, the burnishing, and then the plate is here. And then the, the actual pivot is up here like this. So there's really no pressure downward on that. So there's nowhere for the jewel to go because it's sitting, effectively it's sitting on the, on the base of the shaft of the, uh, the wheel. So you have the wheel, you have the shaft, and then you have the pivot, and it's sitting right on that base there. So, so that's and you look at the the uh, the end shake is up and down. The side shake is side to side for the pivot, up and down, side to side. So, you have to make sure the end and side shakes are perfect, um, and the jewel is the right size. It's not too tight. It's not too loose. It's the right depth, so you don't have it pushing down too hard. So it's a lot of fancy stuff to do jewel setting. So. Um, I always say I'm hoping I don't have to do a jewel setting, but I actually enjoy uh, doing that the very detailed stuff on the pocket watch. Um, and I think you guys out there enjoy watching me fart around with jewel settings and stuff on my lathe. Um, I think I don't think there is a watch that I haven't been able to fix. Anybody who's got me doing work can comment and say, well, my watch isn't working anymore. But there is not usually a watch that I've had a problem uh, fixing. So away I go. I just remembered I have my this AWCC watch here that I had from before. You wind that up. This is one I I actually got from my wife brought it home because some neighbor had it and said it's not working and blah blah blah. So I ended up fixing it. So now it ticks and runs. There we go. And that's a size 18. It's a monster and it's actually in really good condition. So that's a I think that's a milled uh, movement. There's still some funky stuff going on with the setting because there's a, a lever set but this is all in the right position so the funkiness is just based on its age I'd have, probably have to replace one of the gears in there but I'm not too concerned about this watch so so that's that's that so I'm JD again and welcome to my channel if you've never seen me do watch work before then this is it um, and if you want to get a hold of me like I said before get me you can get me at jdwatchservice at gmail.com I call this channel Watch My Service, which I thought was pretty funny. Um, and a shout out to Jesse if you're still watching this video. You probably turned it off by now. But uh, I'm not, I'm, the watch of the day is still the same watch I was wearing last week. So that's the watch of the day. And it is a Hamilton, and it's the Interstellar, the Hamilton Interstellar. All right, all right, all right. And I've got an Apple, this is an Apple uh, Ultra. The Apple Ultra, I got to show you the face I got for it, which is pretty cool. Uh, and I got a the face that says it is, and it's got all kinds of different faces that you've put in there. But this one here is called the Folex. It's called the Folex. You can only guess what they wanted to do there. So that's the Folex watch face. And I put it on a nice leather strap. And you can actually get these connectors here you buy separately. And then you can put any strap onto this, onto the Apple Watch, which is brilliant. So that's what I recommend. So anyway, again, JD, welcome to my channel. Let's go clean this watch up. And, uh, and that's the video for today. And then uh, we'll do a reassembly video later on. Thanks for watching and stay safe and I'll see you later.